everyone. Morning. It's great to see you. Welcome to guys online. Welcome to Fredonia, Kansas, and welcome to Montrose, Colorado. Welcome to Phoenix. I can't wait to see you guys on Thursday night. Looking forward to being with you in, in, in the Glendale area. And so if you're in Tucson or you're in Phoenix, Mesa, Gilbert, that's a good town, or any of those places, uh, come and uh, we'd love to meet with you. Just text me and, uh, or PM me and I'll get you the address of where we'll be meeting. Hey, just a couple of announcements. Um, you know, one of the things that's really important here at Grace Fellowship is our student ministries. And, uh, you know, God has uh, just uh, done a great work. We, uh, some of you might not know, but sometimes at Bomber, we're running up to 50 kids. And uh, that's you guys. And uh, that's awesome. So uh, as of yesterday, um, I have an announcement to make. And that is that this summer, uh, we are going to have a student ministries intern. And uh, most of you know him. His name is Barrett Frizey. And uh, Barrett is uh, coming on our staff. He's uh, been in Moody Bible Institute preparing for ministry. And uh, so he will be here uh, beginning Wednesday night. And uh, so you guys, uh, yeah, you guys make Barrett feel welcome. He, um, he used to be, uh, Keegan, you probably remember this, he used to be Barrett the game guy. And uh, we're going to, when he was the game guy one night, um, Hamlin, you might remember this too. He, he created this concoction to see who could eat this stuff the fastest, and it had octopus and all kinds of things in it. And we pray he's grown past that. And uh, so uh, he, he, will, he, will be, he will be with us. Your brother barfed everywhere. It was really ugly. And uh, <laughs> so student ministries has come a long, a long ways. You guys can just grab more chairs, bring them in there. So uh, anyway, the other thing that um, is really on my heart that I want to ask for is uh, we've had a team of folks uh, called the feasibility team uh, working for about a year just saying, God, what is your plan for us? And uh, as a church, you know, the, 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 sh the foot should never tell the shoe or the shoe should never tell the foot how big it can grow. And, uh, you know, with, with the number of ch kids that we're reaching and so forth at Bomber, um, you know, we're looking for where God has for us next. But with that, we dare not do anything without knowing we're hearing from the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so um, this week, I'm going to encourage you whenever it's, it, it's on your heart. I started to say convenient, but prayer is never convenient. So um, to pray and fast. Um, and fasting may look like you skip a meal or two and just to pray. Or it might mean that you fast from Facebook. I know that she mentioned Facebook, but some of you, I do you really good to fast from Facebook for a week. And, uh, you know, they won't miss you. Your, your, your likes will still happen. And uh, so, or maybe you should fast from the media. And uh, how many of you know the media gets pretty toxic and we hear a lot? So I want to teach you this morning. Um, we started a series actually three weeks ago. And then uh, I'm really just picking it back up. I'm going to be in 1 John chapter 5, verse 8. Um, the fastest way to find 1 John, it's not the gospel of John, it's little John, tucked in the back of your Bible. And the fastest way to find it is to go to Revelation and turn left. No, yes. Yeah, left. Okay, there we go. And so, uh, or it's on the screen. All right. Here we go, 1 John 5, 8. But it's good to follow along in your Bible. Who is it that overcomes the world? Say that with me. Who is it that overcomes the world? Turn to somebody and say, it might be you. Yeah, come on. So one more time. Who is it that overcomes the world? Only the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. The, this is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. He did not come by water only, but by water and blood. It is the Spirit who testifies because the Spirit is the truth. Somebody say, the Spirit is the truth. The Spirit is the truth. For there are three that testify. The Spirit, the water, 
and the blood. And the three are in agreement. Now, that's a little bit of a, of a difficult passage. Um, everybody get your spoon out. Okay, now get your fork. Okay, now put your spoon down and get a knife. All right, we're going to dig into some meat. Okay? You understand, some people like, like milk. Milk has to do with comfort. Meat has to do with change. So he came, he came by water and blood, and it is the Spirit who testifies, because the Spirit is truth, for there are three that testify. Now, in many believers' lives, they give their heart to Jesus. That would be the blood, what he's done for us with the blood. They even enter into the waters of baptism. Jesus did that as well. And it was the water. We're going to do that today. Um, but there's more than just the blood and more than just the water. There is the spirit. Now, some people would say, well, I only need water to be saved. Well, that's not biblical. It's what Jesus did for us on the cross. Baptism doesn't save us. It's a symbol that Jesus has cleansed us by his death on the cross and he's given his life for us. And so we need both water and we need blood. But the water is a symbolic thing, but I'm going to teach you that it's more than that today. So let's go to Hebrews chapter 10, verses 1 through 3. I want to work you through this passage. The law is only a shadow of good things that are coming. Somebody say good things that are coming. Good things that are coming. They're, the law is not the realities themselves. For this reason, it can never, by the same sacrifices, repeated endlessly year after year, make perfect those who draw near to worship. In other words, in the Old Testament, under the law, every year on the Day of Atonement, there would be a lamb that was sacrificed, but that had to be done every year. And so the people were continually renewing. Otherwise, they would not have stopped being offered. For the worshipers would have been cleansed once for all. Somebody say once for all. Once for all. And would no longer have felt guilty for their sins. But those sacrifices are an annual reminder of sins. I wish someone would have taught me Hebrews chapter 10 when I was a kid, and we'll get back to it, or a long time ago, because I was raised in a legalistic environment that every time I blew it, I had to start over. So I gave my heart to the Lord at least 165 times by the time I was 16. Anybody ever been there? Because I would get off the path, and every time I got off the path, I wanted to quit and give up. Because I thought getting off the path meant that I had to start over. Nobody told me, get up, get back on the path, and get moving again. Look at Hebrews chapter 10, verses 9 through 10. Then he said... Here I am, I have come to do your will. This is Jesus. He sets aside the first, that is the sacrifice, ficing of lambs every year, to establish the second. He's going to do something amazing on the cross. And by that, and by that will, we have been made holy through the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. Somebody say once and for all. Once and for all. You don't need to be saved time and time again. You yield your heart to Jesus. And it's a done deal. Now, there's some growth that has to happen with that. And a whole bunch of decisions that keep happening with that. How many of you here ever use a credit card? Okay, I'm not talking debit card, I'm talking credit card. 
So um, how many of you here wish you wouldn't sometimes, huh? How many of you know that using your credit card isn't a payment? It's not, it's not, a, when, you, when you whip out your plastic, it's not a payment. A payment is going to be due later. And when Jesus came, he was making a full payment. In the Old Testament, the shadow of what the reality was going to come, the payment was made every year. So the lambs that were sacrificed on the altar were an installment, not a payment. Isn't it cool when your credit card is paid in full? That's a good feeling. And I'm here to tell you that Jesus paid your debt in full on the cross. Which brings us to Hebrews chapter 10, verses 11 and 14. Day after day, every priest stands and performs his religious duties. Let me stop there. Why did the priest stand? Because there was no chair. There was no resting place. There was no place for him to set because this is not a one and done deal. This is you do it over and over. Some of you need to stop confessing the same things over and over and over as if it hasn't already been paid. And see, some of us practice penance, and penance is where you think what Jesus did for you on the cross isn't enough, so you've got to beat yourself up through a whole bunch of guilt all the time. And all of us tend to do that. Some of us are better at not doing that than others. But sometimes we're just dealing with guilt feelings because the guilt is gone. So, so the, there's no seat. Well, let's keep going. So he offers religious duties again and again, and he offers the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. But when this priest, Jesus, has offered for all time, somebody say all time. All time. One sacrifice for sins, what did he do? He sat down. Now, the priest in the temple, he stood. There's no resting place. The work wasn't done. But Jesus, after he gave his life on the cross for you, for me, he sat down. Now, there would be those that say he sat down because he was the Son of God. That is true. But he sat down for another reason. He sat down because the work was finished. Amen. The sacrifice was one and done. Never again would there need to be another sacrifice. There would only be people who would need to receive his sacrifice for their lives and, and walk in it. Now, so he sat down. Since that time, he waits for his enemies to be made his footstool. Now, according to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 6, and that isn't on the screen, you, when you give your heart to the Lord, are seated there with him. And the seat is the place of authority. It's the place of resting in him, knowing I don't have to strive to prove that I'm worthwhile. I don't have to strive to prove that I'm forgivable. Jesus sat down so I can sit down too in a place of rest. For by one sacrifice, he has made perfect those who are being made holy. Now, let me uh, do a bit of a review from a couple of weeks ago. And I want to talk to you about the difference between sins and sin. Sins would be my trespasses. I crossed a line. I'm on somebody else's property. That's a trespass. Transgression. I know the good I ought to do, but I'm going to not do it, or I know the wrong I shouldn't do, but I do it anyway. Transgression. It is also a missing of the mark. And for all of my sins, somebody say sins, sins. 
Jesus took and nailed them to the cross. Past, present, and future. And by the way, all of yours was future because he did it 2,000 years ago. And all the ones you're going to still do, it's already paid for. He nailed it to the cross. That is your sins. Nailed to the cross, he made you alive. In fact, the Bible says in Romans 6 that you share his death, you also share his resurrection, which brings us to sin. Sin is what it was that made me do it in the first place. You know, the devil didn't make me do it. Okay, how I many you know I do most of that dumb stuff all by my lonesome, huh? Because life brings me choices. Okay, so my sins are nailed. But what about my sin? I need some help. Uh, Keegan, come on up, buddy. He knows he's going to do this. Kale, come on up, buddy. All right. Needing a little, needing a little help. Right over here, Keegan. Kale, rather. So, um, for most of us, you are my ugly flesh. <laughs> okay? You are my old man. You are that that just tries to drag me back because I was born in sin and sin always tries to grab me back. Now, you are going to be the Holy Spirit. Okay? Now let's lock arms. There we go. All right. So, there's a tug of war going on between my flesh. He's winning. And, and, that, and the Holy Spirit. Now, whisper something in my ear. Yeah, hi. Hi to you too. Okay. See, that's what the Holy Spirit does. He's always whispering. And he's whispering how to get away from the flesh. But here's the deal, guys. Sins were done what? Nailed. But the Bible says there are two metaphors the Bible uses about my old man, about my flesh. The first one is crucified. The second one is circumcised. We don't talk about that in church much anymore. <laughs> but circumcised means to be cut off. And so when you give your heart to Jesus, the old man is cut off. <laughs> He's cut off. That's why the Bible says, reckon yourself dead to sin. Now, Holy Spirit, I'm still tempted. And I'm going back. Okay, but when you whisper to me and I receive what you're saying, walk that way. I'm going to follow you. Okay, we're we are. I am in step with the Spirit. When the blood, the water, and the Spirit agree, you are an overcomer. Amen. So, thank you. All right, good job. All right, so. Most of us don't understand when the old man is cut off, my ugly flesh, which is selfish, is cut off. Most of us don't understand that it's cut off. We think it still has power over us, and it will tell you it has power over you, but because your sins are forgiven and your sin is cleansed, circumcised, and crucified, it's lost its power. So any power your flesh has, you have to give it to it. Amen. Are you tracking with me? Yes, we're tracking it perfectly clear. Well, awesome. <laughs> Amen. Now let me teach you back into Hebrews. How many of you know sometimes my behavior doesn't match what I believe? Everybody here, right? You, you do 
something really dumb. <laughs> Just work with me here. I'll get to you. Something really dumb that goes against your principles. Goes against what you believe. What are you supposed to do with that? Number one, our behavior does not match what we believe when we do not understand that our old way of life was cut off. When you had your old way of life cut off, I hear people saying all the time, as an excuse, I'm just a sinner saved by grace. Now, that's true. But the fact of it is, is if your focus is on that you're a sinner, what do sinners do? Sin. Sin. But if I came to the point of, I may fail, I may sin. Now, when I do sin, the Bible says, if any of you, my dear children, I write this so that you will not sin. But if any of you do sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. It's nailed to the cross. So instead of starting over, some people quit because they don't want to be born again, again, and be born again, 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 like some people think they need to be. But remember, the sacrifice was once and for all. It was done, once, finished. So I don't need the blood. The blood's applied. I need to understand that I need cleansing. I need cleansing. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 11 says, we just read it. How about you read it with me? The law is only a shadow of the good things that are coming, not the realities themselves. Now, in the Old Testament, when the priest would go into the temple, there would be an altar, and on the altar, the lamb would be sacrificed. The blood would be shed there on the altar. But then after the blood of the lamb was shed on the altar, the priest would go past the altar into a basin. It was called a laver. And the laver, interesting enough, was made out of the mirrors of the ladies who were in the wilderness. The mirrors were all broken up. So when the priest came in to the laver, he would see a distorted image of himself. And he would wash. He's forgiven. The sin was shed at the altar, at the cross. But now he's washing. It's water. And he's washing because while the blood forgives sin, life sometimes contaminates us. And so we need a washing. We need a continual, are you tracking with me? Yes. Washing. Number two, we need to come to the basin of water when our behavior doesn't match our beliefs. In other words, I don't start over. I just acknowledge my behavior has been slimed. <laughs> I've been acting like a jerk. I've been acting like somebody who isn't acting like somebody whose sins are nailed to the cross. You ever been there? Yep. And the Bible indicates you need cleansing. You need, you need a basin of water to wash in. Now, some people say, well, I sinned because that's just the way I am. Hold on. That's just the way you were. That's not the way you are now. Now, in order to act like a Christian acts, I need to learn to think like a Christian thinks. And so I need to be transformed by the renewing of my mind. Because if I don't understand the sins are nailed and that washing is continual, I will go back to my old life and be who I don't want to be and 
be who I used to be, but I am not now. So why do we act in a way that's incongruous with who we are? Probably because we don't know the power of the cross, the blood, and the power of baptism, the water. Are you with me? We're going to get to the Spirit next week. So when they agree, when they agree, the blood, the water, the Spirit, you are an overcomer. Now, number three, the more you ignore the Holy Spirit and ignore your conscience, the better you get at it. Now, I had um, Kale whisper to me, and um, usually, Kale, the Holy Spirit whispers something more than hi. Okay? <laughs> but uh, he usually whispers, hey, Paul, this isn't the way. Get over here. Or he whispers, was that the attitude? You know, um, that was kind of slimy. You don't need that. That's, not, that's who you were, not who you are. And so the Holy Spirit whispers. Now, in your spirit, because we have parts, you know, I have a body, I have a mind, I have a spirit. One of the organs in my spirit is my conscience. And how many of you know if you ignore your conscience, you'll get good at it? And, and some, people, some people say, well, can I sin and not know it? Well, yes and no, but the Holy Spirit loves you too much to let you get too far away. Amen. He, wants to, he wants relationship with you, so He wants to pull you back into relationship with Him so that you can walk in victory. So don't ignore His voice... Because when you ignore his voice, what will happen is pretty soon he'll, he'll, he'll grow more still and kind of go, John, why should I tell you anything new? You're not doing what I've already told you. So that's why some people say, I never hear from God. Well, if you never hear from God, you need to go back and obey the last time God told, the last thing God told you to do. All right? It's kind of like if you lose your peace, where'd you lose it? Go back and pick it back up. All right. Are you with me? Is this making any sense? Yes. Told you you need a knife and fork. Okay? So the more you ignore it. Now, number four, this is where we're headed. Every time you read and study the word, you are exposing yourself to a basin of water. Now, let's pull out a passage. It's in the context of marriage, but the passage is Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25, and it says, Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church. Guys, how many of you know that's a really tall order? That means you're willing to lay down for her, your life down for her at any moment. And I'm working on that all the time. As a guy, I'm going, oh, God, help me with this one. Okay? Amen? I, I need to be careful. She's not here today. <laughs> Hi, baby. You're probably watching online. <laughs> so husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy now, here's the part I want to pull out. Cleansing her by the washing of water through the word. So, whether you're a man or a lady, when you read the word, it's a washing of water at the basin. Do you ever read the word and the word convicts you? Yes. Or you read it and you go, wow, I have the ability to do that through the Holy Spirit. Now, the reason some of us, back to point number three, we won't go there, but back to point number three, the reason some of us don't listen to the voice of the Spirit is we don't understand that He'll not ask you to do anything that He won't give you the power to do. Okay? So I, I read, I'm into the Word because there's the washing of water. Now, here's what the husband does, but here's what the Word does. To present her to himself as a radiant church. 
We could also say to present all of us to him as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish. Somebody say without any other blemish. Without any other blemish. Now hold on. Well, I'm going to get to that later. <laughs> without stain, wrinkle, or any other blemish, but holy and blameless. Now that doesn't mean you're perfect. Nope. But it does mean your sins are on the cross. And it does mean that your sin nature you should reckon yourself dead to that. Now, let's go to a passage that I've heard a lot of interesting things taught from, and I want to just share it with you because I think it's a picture for us. It's Jesus washing the disciples' feet. All of you have read this. And after that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet. Why did he wash their feet? Well, because they wore sandals and they were dusty. Um, did you ever step in something? Don't you hate it when people spit their bubble gum on the sidewalk and you just you step in it and then there's three more steps that the bubble gum is still there. But, you know, you've been slimed. And uh, you, need, you need your shoes cleansed and then you try to scrape it off so now your hands are like, oh man, I need cleansed. So... He washed their feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. It would have been a linen towel. Linen in the scripture always represents the righteousness of God. So he dried their feet, their dusty, slimed feet, with his righteousness. So... He came to Simon Peter, who said, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? How many of you might have said it like that, too? Yep. How many of you would just prefer nobody messes with your feet? <laughs> okay. God, you aren't washing my feet. I know you're my creator, but you created ugly feet. <laughs> okay. My feet, not, not, a, not a chance, Lord. Jesus replied, you do not realize now what I'm doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you will never wash my feet. And then Jesus said, well, buddy, unless I wash your feet, you have no part with me. Now, let's stop there. He doesn't say you have no part in me. He says, with me. There's a difference. In me is, I'm not cutting you off from salvation because you're already in me. But you're not going to have anointing on your life. You're not going to have blessing on your life. I'm not going to be with you like you need me with you to get you through the next hours. You're going to face Peter if I don't wash your feet. And so then Lord Simon Peter replied, not just my feet, but my hands, my head as well. You know, wash all of me. And Jesus answered, those who have had a bath, I would like to suggest to you, that's salvation. That's the blood. Only need to wash their feet. Don't need to get saved again. You just get up. And if you slime somebody, you tell them you're sorry. Amen. Yes. And if you slimed God, you repent of it and say, God, I didn't need to do that. Forgive me. I'm not trying to crucify you all over again. So those who have had a bath, somebody say had a bath. Had a bath. Only need to wash their feet because their whole body is clean. By the way, in the body of Christ, we need a lot of feet washed. 
because you can get caught up with a stinking attitude really quick. And you can get caught up with stinking thinking really quick. And so, and you are clean, Jesus says to Peter, but not all of you, not every one of you. Meaning, there's one of you that needs more than a bath. His name is Judas. Does that make any sense? So the Lord comes along and says, man, I need to be in the word for cleansing daily. Amen. Sometimes you can be just on an email and hear something you wish you wouldn't have heard. Yes. Or you can click on an ad on the internet and it takes you somewhere that slimes your mind. I know some of you holy people are saying, well, that's why I don't have an internet. <laughs> you know, but you can see a billboard and feel slimed. So, Lord, cleanse my mind today. I can't help that I saw it, but I can help that it's not staying in Jesus' name. Amen. I messed up with my attitude with my wife, but I'm changing it in Jesus' name. I messed up with my parents, but I'm changing it in Jesus' name. Because I may be down, but I'm not staying down because I've had a bath. Amen. And I want to be cleansed and free because whenever the water and the blood come together, something powerful happens. Well, we're going to uh, baptize Keegan Money this morning. <laughs> So, uh, come on up, Keegan. Bring your family. And uh, I promised your dad I'll hold you down till you stop kicking. <laughs> your brother, Ashton. Hi, buddy. Hi. How are you? Good. Let me get a microphone. Which microphone do I get? It's blue. It's not on. All right. There we go. There we go. All right. Keegan, do you want to introduce your family? Uh, yes. You remember their names? Uh, I think so. <laughs> uh, I'm Keegan. This is my brother, Ashton. This is my dad, Terry. And this is my mom, Ron. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Well, Keegan, um, we started working together... Um, uh, quite a while ago when I was in student ministries and uh, it's been really fun to watch you grow um, in that time you've had some ups and you've had some downs but you're not staying down are you because no. you've had a bath yes. amen. Amen. amen and this isn't a bath um, we're going to bring you back out of there because you can't stay <laughs> okay <laughs> so uh, but talk to us why why do you want to be baptized today and uh, what's God doing in your life? And you got a bunch of folks pulling for you. They're here cheering for you. But let's hear from you. Um, ever since... Uh, we all start somewhere in life. And the beginning of my life was very hard. I was born into a family of drug addicts and alcoholics. <laughs> and I didn't learn to love Jesus young, but as my journey went on, things changed and I was going forward in life um, and I've been abused, neglected, hated, not cared for. Uh, then one day I'm told we're going to move to Wyoming. I'm four years old. I got no idea where that is. <laughs> so we moved to Wyoming and uh, I go to school, do normal things. But at home, things were different. 
I put on a fake smile, pretended everything was okay. My home life was not okay. Night after night, I would be beaten or something would happen. Something would always go down. One day, I come home from school and the police are at the apartment. And they tell us that we're being taken to Department of Family Services because our mom was caught with drugs. So that night, we sat in there and they ordered us a pizza and they're frantic, calling people to take us in. Lo and behold, the people I'm standing with right now took me in. <laughs> and the memory I will have forever is the night I went to that house. That woman right there tucked me into bed for the very first time of my life and said that she loved me. <laughs> <laughs> I was made to be at. But there's two sides on the battle. And my biological mom got us back, and things became tough again. And I kept going through everything. Then my mom made a promise to us that she would never do drugs again. That Things were looking good. Three months in, we come to the house and she's caught with drugs again. So we are taken to a new foster home, a place where it felt good, but it wasn't where I felt like I belonged. I went through four foster homes before I came back here and, and February 3rd, 2014, my name was no longer Keegan Haywood, it was Keegan Daniel Money. Yeah. <laughs> and through my life and my journey, I didn't know God until later. And I just realized that he did the things in my life so that I could be safe and I could find where I was belonged and where I was needed and where I fit in. A couple of years ago I was up at Camp Buckle and I accepted Christ. Amen. Amen. It's been a wonderful journey, and it's far from over. I can't wait to see where the rest of my life takes me and my walk with God. Amen. Amen. Is that it? <laughs> That's a lot. All right, all right. Can your youth pastor break through back here? Break, not break through. She's already broken through. Break loose. I know you are. All right, I want her to pray for you. But um, the Bible also says you've been adopted twice. Because you were adopted by mom and dad, Rhonda and Carrie, and they're amazing. They're not perfect but God put you there for a purpose. And um, man, do you know God's an ultimate recycler? Amen. He doesn't waste abuse. And um, sometimes you act out probably still out of your old abuse. 
and make it tough for everybody around. We'll stop that. <laughs> because that was your ugly old man. And he's been cut off. And the only reason he doesn't feel cut off because he wants you back. Because the Bible says you were in darkness and you've been delivered into a spirit of light. And sometimes we get so used to the darkness that we don't even know how to act in the light. So growing in our faith means he's teaching me to act out in the light. Amen. And, and so I'm going to pray. Uh, I think we ought to pray, uh, uh, Stephanie, come on over, for healing of memories um, here. And uh, your testimony's powerful, Keegan, and this won't be the last time you give it. Um, so uh, anyway, let's give her the mic. I'm going to come behind you. Come on over, Mom and Dad. And everybody here, stretch your hand out toward this guy. Father, we just thank you for Keegan. We thank you for the plan you had for him before he was born. God, we know that not everything in our life is your will, but when we come to you, you take it and you turn that which was meant for evil and you use it for good. And you work all things together behind the scenes that we don't even see throughout his life, God. I can't imagine the spiritual battle that was going on over this young man that he never knew. He just saw the physical. But God, you were fighting for him all his life, fighting for him to be in this family, fighting for him to be at this place today. God, I didn't know any of this. Well, I didn't know most of this until this morning when he said that. I've just always looked at him as just a quiet leader in the group who speaks when it's necessary and people listen. Uh, as he did two weeks ago when he called the group to order and said, hey, you know, I've been where some of you guys are going and you don't want to go there. You need to stop and listen and learn and seek God now before you make stupid choices I've made. And God, I thank you for that that leadership that you've put in him. Father, I thank you that Paul's right. He's going to have this testimony and share it and change so many lives because of how he's come through that and seen you work in it. God, we pray for wisdom for his parents as they continue to raise him through college years and, and continue to speak your blessing and your favor and your will into his life. God, we thank you for his brother, that he's going to look up to him and that they're going to have a bond together in Christ beyond just a physical bond of brotherhood, but a bond in you, that they'll keep each other strong and raise each other up before you in prayer. Oh, God, we just I love you for this, this man you've brought here, Father, and the man that, that you've designed him to be. I can't wait to see what, book, what your book for him unfolds as in his life um, as he goes forth from here. But, God, we just thank you for your blessing, your favor, your wisdom in him. God, we thank you that your Holy Spirit has been whispering to him for so long, mm -hmm. and now he's listening. And so, God, we thank you that you're training his ears to hear that. You're training his eyes to see that. And, God, we're just we're grateful for the man that you've, you've molded him into thus far yeah. and what you continue to do Come with on. him in his life. In Come Jesus' on. name, amen. 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 Now heal this memory. Yes. Heal this memory in the name of Jesus. You perhaps won't take it all away, but I ask you to take off the edge. Mm -hmm. Peace resides. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, Keegan, all things work together for good. It doesn't say all things work together for best. Best would have been you never were abused. Mm -hmm. But good means God has a message out of it, and he'll Amen. bring victory out of it. Amen. And you're not going to use it as a tombstone. You're going to use it as a stepping stone in Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus, Amen. we thank you that you bind up his heart as you bind up his mind in Jesus' mm -hmm. name. Amen. 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 All right. And now, Keegan, I want to welcome you to the Polar Bear Club. Not bad, is it? No, not horrible. You haven't got your whole body down yet. Go ahead and sit down. <laughs> All right. Now, while he's in this cold water, <laughs> while he's in this cold water, we always, uh, when somebody comes up out of the water, we say a mighty praise the Lord. I think they should practice first because they might not get it right. On the count of three, let me hear you. One, two, three. Praise the Lord. All right, buddy. 
When Jesus is the Lord of your life, you've got to let go. And that means you let go of that side. <laughs> okay? means you're going to trust me. All right. Keegan Money, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord! <laughs> There you are. Thanks. These guys are going to sing a song about you right now. And uh, you can stand dripping somewhere and uh, listen to it. Or you can get your change of clothes, whatever works. But let's all stand together. Let's celebrate the Keegan. Let's celebrate this song. Let me hear another praise the Lord. Praise the Lord.